Hey everyone, my name is Andy and today I'm going to be showing you how to change out the cabin air filter in a 2016 Model X. Best of my understanding, the 2016, 17, and 18 Model X all change out the same way. Uh, the pre-facelift Model S also changes out this way. The previous Model S, before the facelift, used to be lucky enough that underneath the hood, all you had to do was look in this spot right here, take off this panel, and you've got the cabin air filter. Um, for those of us that have the newer models, they thought they'd just make it more difficult, and from what I'm understanding, it's because the HEPA air filter is now located down in this area, and they had to re uh, redesign the whole intake from the way it sounds. So because of that, now it's located inside the car, and it is now behind the glove compartment. So as we open the door, you can see we've got a couple obstacles as we're going to be doing this here. Uh, first of all... This panel right here is going to have to come off. This panel underneath here has to come off as well. And once you do that, this panel here comes off. And then we have to open the glove box. And there are screws here. And we got a couple others around here. I'll try and walk through as best I can. Obviously, it's going to be a little difficult to film all this while I'm actually doing the process. But I'll see what I can do. Uh, I will disclose beforehand that this is not for the faint at heart since it does require a lot of prying and all these are held on by clips. Most panels on most current cars are held on by clips. Most of them aren't done by screws unless you get inside and they're hidden. Like I said, there are a couple screws in here, but none of them are exposed. So all these initial panels are going to basically be snapped in. And if you haven't had this done before by Tesla service, I think you're going to learn very quickly that a lot of these clips are in here really tight. So it actually takes a lot of prying. Again, it's not for the faint at heart because you're going to feel like you're breaking stuff. A lot of times there's snaps and clicks and all sorts of really loud noises that are a little bit alarming if you've never done this before the other thing i will mention you're going to want some sort of panel removal tools um looks a lot like this you can buy them on amazon uh, they're extremely cheap don't cost very much i would not recommend using a screwdriver uh, for obvious reasons you're going to be uh, prying very hard at a lot of the leather services or services here and i think you're going to find that you can easily ruin and mar a lot of this stuff um, I'm not surprised that a lot of people with six-figure cars aren't tearing into their interiors themselves, but I was a little bit surprised to find out that there's no information almost at all about any of this online. And Tesla themselves, the service department doesn't recommend it. Um, while it won't void your warranty doing this, I will say that if you break anything in here, obviously that's not covered under warranty, so you will be responsible for any damage done. That's my disclosure. That's all you're getting from me. I'm not responsible for anything. Do this at your own risk. But I will follow pretty much the exact same process that the Tesla service techs have told me that they used to do this. So we'll dig in here in just a second. All right, guys. I started out on uh, the panel on the right side here. Didn't show it here, but over here is where I started. Um, using the panel tool, I went ahead and just doubled an old uh, rag over. Um, technically, it's not going to really cause any marks if you just use the plastic, but I've always done this when dealing with panels, especially any type of like leather panel or anything. I just doubled it over twice, kind of like this. Um, started on this side. There's a clip way over on the very right here. Uh, you got to pry this out pretty hard, and it comes out pretty far before it snaps, and like I told you, it will make an extremely loud snapping sound, and it sounds like you broke something, but that is what it's supposed to do. There is a clip above, and then there is one just slightly under it that you got to pry at. Um, after that, usually when you're dealing with this stuff, it starts to just pull out on its own, so let's go ahead and see how that works. Um, you just start kind of working your way across. Um, there is one here. I can see there's one here. So typically to keep from damaging the panel, you also want to go over a little bit further and you want to pry as close to right above the clip as you can. Um, glove compartment obviously is open so you can get underneath. Don't pull up so much as pull out. You can reach under here and there is a lot of room to pull, but you want to pull the top out towards you. Um, so we go ahead and start over. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the pry tool to just to get as close as I can to the clip here. Pry it out a little bit and then we'll try and pull it from there. So we get right over top of it. Get it right on down there. Kind of pry a little bit and pull. All sorts of snaps. There goes that clip. 
And as usual, there's one underneath as well. Clips. Now, we're getting enough that leverage, you might be able just to work your way across here. Again, not for the faint at heart. I don't even like doing this myself, even though I know that this is the way it comes out and this is the exact same way that the service department's gonna remove it. It just isn't a good feeling ripping your car apart snap at a time here. Uh, but this is the way it's gotta be done. Another clip located right here. Got them in there good. All right, as we get over closer, I can see there's another clip located about right here. As you work your way down, it gets easier, obviously, to spot them. Um, does it make it any easier to want to snap it off? And I know from pictures I'd seen in the past that there are also a couple clips here, and then there's clips that are recessed back here, but all of them are facing forward. So as long as you pull forward force, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting those out as well. Goes the bottom clip. Okay, as you can see, the bottom panel is coming out ten times easier than the top did. Um, I don't think it really matters if you do the top or the bottom first, but. That one came out with unbelievable ease compared to the, how, how much work the top panel has been. This right here is exactly why they don't show you how to do this in the manual and they don't tell you to do it because they don't trust the average person to do this. This is something that I don't even think the average person should be doing. You have to take a lot of extra precautions when you are we're pulling around a lot of these panels because they take a lot of might to pull out. And a lot of times when they pop out, they pop out and then they bounce back and they can really, really do some damage on a lot of your interior surfaces if the clips pop back and mar whatever surface it was on. So you really gotta be careful. To be honest, I am really close myself to just folding and throwing in the towel here. I have discovered there are six more clips. So this big solid piece here has six clips holding. All of them pull outward, but the catch is there really isn't anywhere that you can actually grab onto to pull this because all these interior pieces are kind of fit and finished over top of them. Um, I'm actually debating myself if this is even worth going on any further. Alright guys, after working at this for a while, I had to stop the video, step out for a minute, but I was able to actually pop these two tabs, there's a tab here and a tab here out, uh, just by hand and pulling. Um, so I've got pretty much everything popped out, except supposedly there's a tab back here, and then there's like three of them that go up here. Um, I won't uh, lie, this has actually been an absolute uh, pain in the butt so far. Um, I've probably been working at this almost an hour total and still haven't gotten this panel off yet. I did get the bottom off, and um, uh, after this panel comes off, it's pretty much downhill from there. It's much quicker. I'm going to uh, stop for a minute since it's really difficult to actually film this. I'm going to work at this one down here and see if I can get that to come out here. Um, I will report back here and uh, let you guys know how that goes. All right, guys, I did finally get this thing removed. Um, it just took some no fear, ridiculous pull out with all your strength type of moving to get this thing pulled out. Um, as you can see, you have got a clip that went here, a clip that went here, um, clip here, clip here, clip here, clip here. So this section back here is an absolute pain in the butt to pull out. Um, so far, just from what I've seen, I don't know how much Tesla would charge to just change the air filter, but at this point, there's not much I would say this for, but I would probably say so far, just from the over hour I've been working on these panels, 
if this has never been done to your Tesla before and all of the clips are tightly in there from the factory, it might be worth it to actually pay to have this done. Um, I can also show you, I mean, you got um, clips here, clip here, 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 here. All sorts of clips. And you can see there's lots of screws in here now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out. Supposedly, the glove box is going to pull out, although I do still have to pull this end cap off. I'm told that there's some sort of wire that's attached to the end cap, so I will go ahead and pull that off, and um, we'll go from there, and I'll show you the steps that follow this. All right, so in comparison to that huge panel I just took off, taking this off is an absolute joke in comparison. It pops out super easy. There's barely any prying, but again, it does have a bunch of clips on it. Um, it looks like I still got one I got to pop out down there, but I'll go ahead and pop the rest of that out. But this one, I didn't show me removing it, but it pops out extremely easy, even easier than this bottom piece down here did, which I don't know if I showed that or not. Um, there are screws, you have to open the box, but you can see or not because the lighting's awful. And here, there's a torque screw in here. There is one right down here. There's one down here. There's one up here, up here, up here. These are the six screws that have to be removed to remove the glove box. All right, apparently we have another example of where the Model S does differ from the X. On the S, there was some sort of wiring that was plugged up to this panel. On the X, there's nothing. So you can pretty much freely pull this thing off. It is held on by one, two, three, four, five, five clips, and they come out pretty easily. All right, I went ahead and removed those six screws. We got one here, here, and here, one down here, one back here, one here. Um, they are all the same size screws, so you don't need to keep them separate. They took a Torx bit, a T20 Torx bit, and I had to put it on the end of a socket to get to these back ones because they are in here pretty far. Um, after that, um, you apparently just go ahead and just slide this out. Um, it's plugged up to some stuff, but oh my gosh, we are finally starting to see that box back there. Don't know if you can because this is so awful in the sun, but hey, there it is. That is our box, I believe, that's going to have our filter in it. So, um, we still got a lot of electronics and stuff plugged in here. I'm trying to figure out, yep, we can get to it without unplugging everything. You just slide the box down. Nothing is holding it in now, and there's our filter box. Um, again, I don't know if this has been worth it. Um, once it's done once, there's a good chance that all this stuff's going to be really loose and it won't be difficult the second time, but right now, I don't know. Okay, so I went ahead and just uh, dropped the uh, glove box on down here. Um, there are three connectors that you have to disconnect if you want to take them completely out. I got two of them off. This third one looks like some sort of a proprietary connector, and I'm having a heck of a time getting it out, and quite frankly, it's not worth any more effort with how much fun this has been as it is, because now you can see that you can clearly get to this. I already took the cover off of it. It just uh, comes off, and right out here comes our air filter, which uh, apparently looks almost the exact same as the one I'm getting ready to put in, so it tells me that this probably really wasn't needed. Um, I do have the um, premium upgrade package in this car, so I also have the HEPA filter, and a lot of people tell me that it goes to the HEPA first, then to the cabin. By the look of this, my car has uh, 15,000 miles, and it is about two years old. Um, I don't think it's even necessary, unless you're doing the routine maintenance and paying the $1,000 for your second year maintenance. I would probably suggest either just skipping this or just having them only install the cabin air filter and don't do anything else for you if you're able to do all the other stuff. I don't think it's that difficult. So, um, install is going to be the reverse. I don't think it really takes much of an explanation to explain how to put it back together. But, um, yeah, this filter doesn't look a whole lot different than my other one. So, just a heads up, if you do have the premium upgrade package with the HEPA filter, um, I don't even know if the cabin air filter needs replaced at the second year. I'm probably going to probably give it another probably four years before I would replace it again. Well, I figured since I came this far, I might as well make a comparison to show you guys the condition of these two filters after 15,000 miles and two years of use in this car. Um, can you even tell which is new and which is old? I guess uh, the old one is a little bit dirtier. <laughs> um, and it has a slightly different color, but ultimately it's not near as drastic. I didn't have leaves and other crap in there I thought I was going to, and nothing like uh, in our Subaru or our Toyotas are. So... Uh, judge for yourself, guys. If you think it's worth it, go for it.
Hope this video helped you guys out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, you can subscribe if you like. I'll be doing some stuff off and on here with the Tesla, just maintenance here and there. Um, I also uh, do some stuff on our Corvette once in a while. But otherwise, um, thanks for tuning in, guys.